so my album uh, that I that I want, wanted everybody to listen to is probably the newest album uh, on our list for this one. Um, I only came out a couple of years ago, but these guys are so cool. They're doing some awesome stuff. It's a it's a sound that you know is familiar, but is also different to anything I've, anything I've heard before. Um, and I just want I want to get get these guys more press. Um, so the album. The album I got for this month is Madhu Mokhtar, Afrique Victim. Um, so Madhu Mokhtar is the stage name for uh, for this guy, basically out of Niger. Um, Niger, Niger, you know what you know what it is, Sub-Saharan Africa. Um, but basically, he is this musician who uh, was fame, really gathering fame in um, sort of Sub-Saharan rock world. Um, and I've got some cool things to say about Sub-Saharan rock. But one of the coolest things I can tell you about is how like how people are, are sort of artists are discovered or sort of gain fame in that community. Because um, there's not a whole lot of radio, there's not a lot of internet infrastructure to, to stream music. So what happens is basically you'll have these markets in Sub-Saharan Africa where these guys all pass around SIM cards full of music and they'll copy it and they'll they'll, they'll distribute it and they'll give they'll sell these sim cards to people and so that, that's how you get your music out uh in that in that region of the world which i think is super cool and it reminds me a lot of you know back in high school um a few of us would be passing around the old the old flash drive right and we you know take all the stuff on there we copy it over our computers put some new music on there and pass it off the next person right and it makes the rounds so basically um this this guy Manu Mokhtar he was featured uh, on this Spotify playlist called Sounds from the Sahara, Volume One. Uh, and I guess it was just this guy who, you know, this guy constructed a playlist of all these different artists coming out of Sub Saharan Africa. And he was, it was heard by this producer uh, or sort of not quite AR guy, but you know, a guy who, who has influence in the music industry. And he's, he, on a Got a hold of Madhu Mokhtar and sent him this like cherry red guitar, like I think it's a Fender. And it took like six months for the guitar to get to him. Like it, you know, it came out of France and went into you know Morocco and then bopped around Sub-Saharan Africa for a while. But basically, um, he's just been ever since then he's been getting some more more sort of mainstream appeal, um, getting more traction in sort of areas of the music industry that aren't wouldn't traditionally be open to him. Um, so this album, now we can talk about the music. This album is like straight blues rock. You know, it is, it's got all the DNA from, you know, a, a really rich blues tradition out of Africa, um, which I find really interesting is that like American blues and African blues both developed sort of independent of one another, but they found a lot of the same DNA, um, which I find really, really cool. But I think the defining feature on this album is his guitar playing? Uh, you know, it is a a, a, a Touareg style, which is kind of it's the name of like the of the people that he comes from, um, the Touareg people out of out of that area of the world. But this guitar playing just floors me every time I hear it. It's it's unlike anything I've ever heard before. Um, and if you go, dear listener, you go to KEXP's YouTube channel and search for Madhu Mokhtar, you'll see what I'm talking about. Uh, this guy's fingers just move up and down the neck of his guitar, like a, like poetry, poetry in motion. Um, so yeah, I'd love to hear what you guys think, but like this album for me is just it's so solid. Um, I you know don't speak the language. I don't you know I can't like associate with his life experiences. I can't like know where he's coming from with a lot of these songs. But what he's but what he's bringing to this album is just absolutely fantastic. Yeah, um, guess I'll go first here. Um, I thought this was like a really great album, um, like really really good, beginning to end. Um, it flows really well together. It's funny too that you say that you get like a, a blues vibe from it. I guess I do get that too. I also get like a lot of psychedelics. Um, vibe from it too especially like there's not a lot of distortion but just like in the way 
And the way that the music kind of comes together, it feels psychedelic. And maybe that's just a product of like music from that part of the world kind of just sounds psychedelic. Um, but yeah, I, I love this album. Um, I also looked up, I actually looked up an interview that he did and he built his own guitar. Like this guy's so cool. Um, like, I just want to meet him. <laughs> like, <laughs> built, but, um, from, uh, built it from wood and bicycle parts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's done a lot of cool, cool stuff. Um, pretty sure he's going like, to Chicago pretty soon. Oh yeah. Well, we should, we should all go see him. I would say that. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. Um, but yeah, and I think too, like similar to like with the Taj Mahal record, like I don't, I don't know if he's played, I don't, I don't know if he's played. Um, I think it's like a group of four guys, right? And maybe they have like another people, other people come on, but um a lot of like the live stuff that I've seen, I know that they have like the slim um like cast of musicians or like band, but uh it sounds like there's a lot going on and also um, a lot of clapping. And like, I also like wanted to sing along to these songs, but I didn't know what the hell they were saying, but it sounded like really fun. And it sounds like a lot of it was like chanting and like the continuation of chanting and like just kind of repeating that over and over again with like these really cool psychedelic riffs in the background. Um, yeah, it was great. I also ran to this album and it was, it was like a nice run on the treadmill. Um, it was really nice. So um, yeah, if you haven't done that, try it out. <laughs> um, I want to say, <clears throat> yeah, this album was like such a cool pick, especially for this thing we're doing here. Um, just cause it's like, exp- I've never heard anything like this, you know, just like from front, like a record from the back, like, like that. Um, I have, I have listened to this, his stuff before. I think he's, well, anyway, this, this album, I think is the first one of two that came out on that label. Or maybe it's the second one. I forget. This this just come out. Yeah, this is the second studio album. Okay. Well, there's yeah the two albums. I think he's on like I forget what label, but it's like an American like small label that you know. It's Matador Records. Matador Records. No yeah. on it. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So, but yeah, I mean, I I've heard it before, but I think like I didn't really click with me until this listen, and then just because like really sitting down and listening to it. Um, just being like, wow, this is like really interesting stuff, <laughs> like, like stuff you haven't heard, but, um, but I think what you said, um, earlier about the blues, um, DNA of it, I think that makes a lot of sense. Cause it sounds like so different, but then once you hear his guitar playing, his guitar playing is very similar to like how like a blues guitar solos would sound. And it just, yeah. like, once he plays, it kind of fits the puzzle piece together and you're kind of like, oh, okay. That kind of makes sense. Um, but yeah, I don't yeah. know. Really cool. I, I feel like I need to keep listening to it because every time I listen to it, I like it more. Um, cause it's a little like, you know, at first you're kind of like, like, well, this is weird. <laughs> like, you know, when you first listen to it, but I don't know. I think I like it more as I listen to it. For me, this was just a really cool listen from front to back. Um, I sort of, I definitely resonate with the sort of thinking that it, it feels familiar, but also like nothing I've ever really listened to ever um it's just such a cool sort of departure from any sort of rock or blues i've ever really heard and um i i don't know if this is really based on anything i can really pinpoint but uh, there's almost aspects of it that feel um sort of like uh, sort of like middle eastern in nature where it just sort of the the scale structures and sort of the the way that I would almost go far to, as far to say that it almost feels like there's quarter tones or, you know, just there's just something very exotic in the scales we're using that isn't just straight blues or rock. Um, you know, that just sort of feels like the desert for, for lack of better, you know, way of putting it. And that that's just such a cool element to hear in electric music, because usually I'm used to hearing that sort of scale structure in uh sort of more classic instruments, you know, you know, more classic wood. Um, So it it just, it sounds like something very new that is exciting. It's it's very fresh. Um, Yeah. Yeah. Very, very cool stuff. Yeah. um, All I have to add is that I love this album. I, uh, I listened to it a bunch when it first came out. Um, It is, he just shreds on the guitar. It's insane. 
And um, I actually saw something, uh, this story a while back um, where they followed this other group called Tenarawen that is also the, from the, these Tuareg people, these like Berber ethnic groups in sub-Saharan Africa. Um, and it turns out that these, this tradition of music had a pretty heavy influence on like 60s and 70s psychedelic rock, like guys like Jimi Hendrix and like the Beatles chilled yeah. with these guys in the desert, these groups of people in the desert and were influenced by it uh, and by their music. So it comes from this kind of very rich tradition, which is really interesting, I think. I didn't know that. That's fascinating. It's funny. Shout out yeah. PBS News Hour. Oh. <laughs> I just want to touch on that real quickly before we move on to anyone else, because that's sort of what was in the back of my mind was thinking of like when the Beatles went to go see Ravi Shankar and came back with all these sort of exotic scale structures and sort of that psychedelic movements that was grounded in a lot of that, you know, like sitars and, you know, all those sort of, mm-hmm. you know, exotic to us instruments and, and the exotic sounds that came from that area. But uh, anyways, that's all I really wanted to add. So you know, it, it's just cool that you touched upon that. Yeah, I, so I, uh, one more thing I want to say about it um, is that there is a, a music festival in the Sahara in Morocco that's called held every year. And a life goal of mine is just to go. I want to like rent a Toyota Hilux and like stash a 50 gallon jug of water in it and just like drive in the Sahara and then just go chill with some Bedouins for, for a week. I think that'd be so freaking cool. Um, and if you guys want some, like, if you're, if you're curious about sort of like the DNA of African blues rock, I've got an album for you. Maybe next time we do like a, a classic album sort of month, we'll, I'll, I'll throw it in there. Um, but if you want, if you want the recommendation, uh, leave a comment or just like text me. Um, hit my DMs. Yeah. Hit, hit me up in the DMs. Um, yeah, uh, before we, uh, so I'll, I'll give us a this is this is a strong like nine nine and a half out of ten for me. Uh, it touches all the it pushes all the right buttons for me. Um, it rocks out. It's both like it's new but familiar. Uh, it's a it's a well it's a good length of an album too. It's not too long. It's not too short. Um, and then it's just got some yeah like we talked about some really cool elements to it. Um, 